Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this propped cantilever beam. In this beam, we have uniformly distributed load for the full span. First, we have to derive the expressions for the fixed end movement at A and the vertical reactions. Then we have to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. Then we have to derive the expressions for the maximum deflection and its location. And then we have to derive the expressions for the slope at the propped end. In this analysis, first we are going to find the prop reaction RB. For that, we can use this concept. In the point B, the upward deflection due to RB will be equal to downward deflection due to the uniformly distributed load. To find the deflections, we can use the movement area method. The formula is area X bar upon EI. Using that formula, we can get this expression. We can eliminate EI. Finally, we are getting this expression. Area 1 X1 bar is equal to area 2 X2 bar. Now, let us find the bending moment values. We have to find the bending moment values about the fixed end. In this case, we are moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anti-clockwise will be positive. First, let us take RB. RB is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is L. RB into L, we will get RBL. Now, let us take the uniformly distributed load. This load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is L. We know that when the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and a distance by 2. L into L, we will get L square. So, WL square by 2. Since it is negative, we have to draw the diagram below the line. We know that RB is a point load, so the diagram will be in the shape of a triangle. For the uniformly distributed load, the diagram will be in the parabolic shape. Now, let us find area 1 x1 bar. This is a triangle. We know the formula of the area of a triangle, half into BH. Here, B is L and the height is RBL. Let us apply them. The centroid distance is 2 by 3 into L. Now let us find area 2 x2 bar. This is a second degree parabola. For this parabola, the area formula is 1 by 3 into BH. Here B is L and height is WL square upon 2. The centroid distance is 3 by 4 into L. In this expression, let us apply area 1 x1 bar and area 2 x2 bar. We can eliminate this 2 and this 2. L into L into L, we will get L cube. We can eliminate this 3 and this 3. L into L square into L, we will get L power 4. 4 into 2, we will get 8. Let us take L cube upon 3 on the other side. It will come inversely. Let us eliminate L cube and power 4. Finally, for RB, we are getting 3WL upon 8. Now, let us apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0 and find RA. RA and RB are acting upwards, so both of them are positive. The UDL is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance. Here, the distance is L. W into L, we will get WL. For these two terms, we can take LCM. Let us keep 8 as LCM. 8 into WL, we will get 8 WL. 3 WL minus 8 WL, we will get minus 5 WL. We can take minus 5 WL upon 8 on the other side. So, it will come as positive. So, for RA, we have got 5 WL upon 8. Now, let us apply the rule sigma m is equal to 0 and find ma. 
I am going to take movement about A from the point B. In this case, I am moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. R B is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is L. U D L is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. When the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and a distance by 2. Here the distance is L, so L into L by 2. Let us assume that MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive. L into L, we will get L square. For these two terms, we can take LCM. Let us keep 8 as LCM. For that, we have to multiply this term with 4 in the numerator and denominator 3wl square minus 4wl square we will get minus wl square then we can take this term on the other side so it will come as positive finally for ma we have got wl square upon 8 now we are going to draw the shear force diagram to find the shear force in the point a we can use right hand side rule upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Using that for shear force at just to right of A we will get 5WL upon 8. To find the shear force in the point B we can use the left hand side rule upwards will be negative and downwards will be positive. Using the rule for shear force at just to left of B we will get minus 3wl upon 8. Here you can see the shear force diagram. In this point the shear force becomes 0. So in this point there will be maximum positive bending movement. In that point let us make a section and let us keep the distance as x. We know that in this section the shear force is 0. Let us use left hand side rule. Upwards will be negative and downwards will be positive. This load is acting upwards so it is negative. The UDL is acting downwards so it will be positive. When the UDL comes we have to multiply with the distance. The distance is x so w into x. We can take this term on the other side so it will come as positive. Then we can eliminate w. Finally for x we are getting 3L upon 8. Now let us find the maximum positive bending moment. This load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 3L upon 8. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. When the UDL comes we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. L into L we will get L square. 8 into 8 we will get 64. Here also L into L we will get L square. 8 into 2 into 8 we will get 128. For these two terms we can take LCM. Let us take 128 as LCM. For that we have to multiply this term with a 2 in the numerator and denominator. 18 WL square minus 9 WL square we will get 9 WL square. So the maximum positive bending moment is 9WL square upon 128 and it occurs at the distance of 3L upon 8 from the point B. Now let us find the bending moment at A. Here we can use right hand side rule. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. Here you can see the bending moment diagram. In this point the bending moment becomes 0. This point is called the point of contraflexure. Let us make a section in this point at a distance of x from the point B. Let us find the moment in this section. This reaction is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is x. The uniformly distributed load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is x so x into x by 2. We can eliminate x also w 
4 twos are 8. So for x, we have got 3L upon 4. We have got this distance from the point B. Suppose we have to find the location of point of counterflexure from the point A. We have to subtract 3L by 4 by L. When we do that, we will get L upon 4. Now we are going to find the slope and deflection values. In the point A, there is a fixed support. So the slope and deflection in the point A will be 0. Since there is a vertical support in the point B, the deflection in the point B will be 0. Now we are going to find the slope in the property end and the maximum deflection. For that we are going to use Macaulay's method. In that method we have to make sections. In this beam there is UDL for the full span. So only one section is enough. You can see that I have made a section at a distance of x from the point B. Let us find the movement in this section. RB is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is x. The uniformly distributed load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. We know that when the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. Here the distance is x, so x into x by 2. Let us equate the movement with ei d square y upon dx square. x into x, we will get x square. Let us integrate on both of the sides. When we integrate d square y upon dx square, we will get dy upon dx. For integrating x and x square, we can use this formula. When we integrate x, we will get x square upon 2. And when we integrate x square, we will get x cube upon 3. 8 into 2, we will get 16. 2 into 3, we will get 6. C1 is the constant. Let us integrate this equation again. When we integrate dy upon dx, we will get y. When we integrate x square, we will get x cube upon 3. We can eliminate 3 and this 3. When we integrate c1, we will get c1x. c2 is the new constant. When we integrate x cube, we will get x power 4 upon 4. 6 into 4, we will get 24. We know that in this beam, in the point A, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. We know that dy upon dx is the slope. So when x is L, dy upon dx is 0. Let us apply this in this equation. L into L square, we will get L cube. When we add these two, we will get WL cube upon 48. Finally for C1, we will get minus WL cube upon 48. We know that in the point B, there is a vertical support. So in the point B, the slope is 0. In this case, we can apply the condition. When x is 0, the deflection y is 0. In this equation, let us apply x is 0 and y is 0. When we do that, we will get C2 which is 0. In the slope equation, let us apply the value of C1. Let us keep this equation as number 1. In the deflection equation, let us apply the values of C1 and C2. Let us keep this equation as number 2. Now let us take this equation and find the slope in the property end. We know that dy upon dx is slope. Since we are going to find the slope in the point B, let us denote dy upon dx as theta b. Also, we know that in the point B, the value of x is 0. So instead of x, let us apply 0. Finally, for theta B, we are getting minus WL cube upon 48 EI. Now, we are going to find the maximum deflection. We know that when there is maximum deflection, the slope will be 0. Let us take the slope equation and equate that to 0. For these three terms, we can take LCM. I have kept 48 as LCM. We can take W upon 48 outside. 
and take that on the other side 0 upon w by 48 we will get 0 let us keep x is equal to kl so instead of x we have to apply kl we can take l cube outside and on the other side 0 upon l cube we will get 0 then using the calculator we can solve this equation we will get three solutions k is equal to 1 not possible this is also not possible because the value will be negative this is only possible so for k let us take this value we know that x is equal to kl for k let us apply the value we can take 16 outside now let us take the deflection equation and apply the value of x and find the maximum deflection instead of x let us apply this we can take l upon 16 cube outside l cube into l we will get l power 4 16 cube we will get this l into l cube we will get l power 4 we can take l by 16 the whole power 4 outside 16 power 4 we will get this we can multiply these two we will get this and we can multiply these two we will get this let us take w l power 4 outside then using the calculator we can calculate this we will get minus 0 0.0054 0 0.0054 approximately can be taken as 1 upon 185 for the maximum deflection we have got a negative value that means it is acting downwards we have found the maximum deflection it occurs at the distance of l upon 16 into 1 plus root 33 or we can use the calculator we will get 0.4215 l now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video